Hey everyone, I went up to Northern Arizona. While I was there, my buddy Eric brought his brand new Abasi Larada Legion 8 string guitar. So I thought it'd be fun to review it with a different kind of scenery and backdrop, although doing things outside was a little tricky. I hope you enjoy the video. I'm gonna go over the features with it, but I thought I'd share with you a little different landscape. It's a little windy today, but I thought it'd be a fun video. Uh, some of you guys don't know, but I live in Arizona and I thought it'd be fun to share that, uh, share my dirt and weeds <laughs> with you. So a couple things about this guitar that's worth noting. This is the Sage Blue, I believe, and it looks kind of like a baby blue or a Daphne blue, but it's actually got like a gray muted tone to it and it looks beautiful. In fact, that's probably the thing I think I like the absolute most about it, besides the cool design, is the amazing color. Now, other thing that was really interesting when I was checking this out was it is made in the World Manufacturing Facility, which we know makes a lot of guitar brands, including Schechter. But I thought was really interesting was they used the same template when they stamped the serial number. And I don't know if it was on purpose or accident. I don't know what the relationship is, but the serial number underneath it says SGR, which would stand for Schechter Guitar Research. And it's actually in the Schechter Guitar font. So I'm not sure if Schechter is producing these or helping produce these, maybe distribute these. I'm not sure if they're involved at all or if when they ordered these, the factory just didn't have a different stamp and <laughs> so they stamped it with this but we do know that Schechter was doing some distribution for Wild Audio which is Zach Wild's brand so it might be connected it might not I don't know the only thing we do know is the Wild Audio guitars did not have the SGR stamped at the bottom of their serial numbers but I want to go over some of the uh, features on this that are really cool first it has eight individual saddles because of course it's an eight string guitar and uh, these actually are a little different than some of the ones I've seen they're a little shorter and I like them it is a string through body five bolt neck which is cool this neck in particular looks really really good it's a three-piece neck you can see the center line right here and the two sides which are beautiful fan frets are different uh, if you don't understand the concept this concept is that on the larger strings you're going to get a longer scale uh, so that they get more tension and on the higher strings you get a shorter scale which would make it easier for bending so you don't have to have quite as much tension and uh, that's really cool <laughs> I want to talk mostly in this video about fit and finish, things I see. The paint is beautifully done. The neck is also carved and done very beautifully with the fret ends and fret treatment being very good. However, this one, when it came in, the frets were, even though they were standing still, they were a little rough. Need a little teeny polish, and I mean a little bit, just enough to, to gla glass them up a little bit. Does have locking keys, but they are just labeled a bossy. The nut is carved really well, although there's a little bit, I'll show a picture right here. There's a little bit of filler. Again, this is a $2,000 guitar, so to see the nut having a couple issues, really not the greatest thing to see. You want to see something better than that. The other side of the nut, though, looks nice and clean. Uh, the paint lines, everything else looks finished really well. And considering they're doing a lot of this trim stuff where they're taping off, you know, sometimes you'll see overspray or issues there. I really dig the output jack being on the back facing up right here. You think it'd be in your way, but it's never in your way. And that brings up another thing that's really cool. I like to sit with it like this but you can sit like this and that's really cool now the other thing that's kind of strange is with the strap on the strap makes it feel or sit really horizontal and you think it'd want to be set up so you kind of kind of have to tilt it up to do that uh, if you use a thicker strap that's not a problem but I assumed when I put on the strap that immediately it would kind of sit in this position, but it doesn't. It sits exactly horizontal. It's not top heavy at all, but it sits very horizontal. One volume knob with a push-pull switch. Uh, there's a five-way selector switch here, and I'll give you a sound of all the pickups with the overdrive. I'm using the Plexi tone.
Now, again, like I said, I'm not an eight string player. I've uh, maybe picked up a few when I've worked on them in the past. It's just a little bit much for me. And I love seven strings. So like I said, this and a seven, I think I would really enjoy. Uh, uh, but my buddy Eric loaned this to me since he was got one of these the second they came out. And uh, so that's why it's the eight, not the seven. But I figured I'd at least share it with you because it's a cool guitar and we get to share it and share a little bit of Arizona with you as well. Uh, the uh, truss rod is a spindle truss rod at the base. And again, another very cool option uh, for adjustment, especially on something like this where, you know, you've got a lot of tension on the neck. I know a lot of people are going to ask about the neck carve. The neck carve is very thin, thinner than some of the Ibanez eight strings I played um, and definitely thinner than the Schechter eight strings. So obviously he had a lot of influence in this neck carve because this is not a familiar neck carve to the eight strings that Schechter have made uh, that I've experienced where there's a little bit of roundness to the back of the neck and a little thicker. This is pretty thin. This is as I think it's perfect, uh, in my opinion, perfectly, perfectly, not too thick, not too super thin, any thinner, uh, it'd be a little tricky, <laughs> but, uh, it just worked great. Uh, the fretboard is ebony and looks perfect. I'm looking at, in fact, there's no veining or anything. I mean, it's a dark piece. It looks great. Uh, I love the, the attention to the, uh, the dots going this way again and and something else to talk about that's really cool um is that a lot of people think you know abasi you know uh, ivan has designed this body and then abasi took it and took off with it that's not true at all i actually talked to tosin about this and he told me the story uh in person so i can tell you uh what he said and i believe him so you know um he told me that he had a great relationship with Ibanez and uh, that, you know, they had the, the Tosin RG model and he, he drew this up. He drew this uh, design, gave it to him. They obviously made him some prototypes, samples based on his drawings. He liked it. The audience uh, and viewers, fans said, hey, you know, we'd love to have that model. And he kept urging Ibanez and they were working on it with him. It had been about two years and they still hadn't gotten anywhere with it. And the reason why I say I believe him is not only because he's a really nice guy. I actually know the Ibanez guys pretty well. And the Ibanez guys uh, are great, but sometimes Ibanez, like a lot of corporations, moves a little slow. So when he was telling me that, I said, yeah, I understand that. And so obviously he left in hopes to just bring this guitar, you know, his vision to the fans, to guitar players. Is one of these in my future? I don't know. Like I said, I really like it. Um, I like it enough to, to now, uh, at this point, uh, I like it enough playing it, touching it, uh, to, to at least consider the seven string for sure. Another thing that's interesting about this is, again, I think that's why I'd be more comfortable with the seven, is the eight, the spacing is really tight. And for Tosin style, where he's using the thumb up and down like a pick, for his lap, I think it works great. For me, I, I slap in a percussive downward motion. So I kind of need a little space between the strings. Obviously the bass allows me that, but even on guitars, a little spacing helps. You know, it's funny, eight string is new, fan frets is new for me. It's a lot to get used to right away, but I can see what people are saying. Every minute I play on this guitar, it becomes more natural to me. The more I play it, I'm getting a little bit more familiar each, each minute. So there you have it, the new Abasi uh, line of guitars that come out of the World Factory. Again, very, very cool. I wanna thank Eric for letting me borrow the guitar. Thank you guys for hanging out as always and spending some time with me today. As you've seen, my hair got a little windblown today's episode, but I thought it'd be different and fun. And as always, I wanna thank you so much for your time. Till the next time, know your gear.